So we gotta have that. So we gotta have that line item for repairs. You know, whatever that number is gonna be. We like to use at least five hundred dollars a year, even on a new house. Five hundred dollars can be wiped out with one service call. It can be wiped out with a couple of different service calls. We just always want to cover it and not not put anything in there. Now then you manage it. You go in and if somebody's got their garbage disposal that is clogged up because they put chicken bones in it. Well, that's not what it's really designed for, chicken bones. So it locks it up. You got to have a plumber come out, pull the chicken bones out of it, free it up, get it working. That expense should be passed on to the tenant. That should not be your expense because it's something that they did wrong. If you don't have that built into your lease, then build that into your lease to cover repair work. You know, our leases have the repair work is on the tenant unless it is something that is the responsibility of us, that is our responsibility of the landlord. And let's say they got a leaky faucet. Okay, so a leaky faucet is on me. I got to fix a leaky faucet. I got to fix a running toilet. I got to fix a bad water heater. I got to fix most of the stuff. There's not a lot of stuff. We have grinder pumps here in our sewage system. So everything that comes out of the house, all of the solids and the toilet paper and everything else goes into a grinder pump, which then is pumped to the city's lift station. That is all fine. But if people use the feminine hygiene wipes or facial wipes or baby wipes and they throw it in a toilet, it goes into those grinder pumps and the grinder pumps will jam on them. So we have in our leases, if you clog, if, if we have a service call on your grinder pump and it's stopped up from something other than normal stuff that should be in a toilet, which is pee, poop, and toilet paper, and um, I guess if you're younger and you like to party, maybe a little throw up every now and then. Apart from that stuff, nothing else should be in that toilet. You know, we don't, we don't throw paper sacks in there. We don't throw plastic bags in there. We don't throw tampon applicators in there. It just doesn't work. We don't throw our tampons in there or other people don't throw theirs. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any, but if I had any, I would not be able to throw it in there either. So it's just common sense stuff, but you lay that out really in good detail on your, your landlord's lease so that everything is spelled out and you cover every scenario you possibly need to. If you need a a copy of a good lease or something, send it, send us a message, let us know you're looking for something and I'll get my wife to, to get a blank copy that she can send out on some stuff that we use. Now I'm not going to say what we use is absolutely perfect and going to save you in every scenario. It's not, but we can give you a use. You can add to it or take away from whatever you need to do it. I can tell you our attorneys have looked over it basically almost every single month or every quarter. They're spending some time on our lease to to redo something in it. So we very, very adamant on having a really good solid lease. So that is the basic format of cap rate. So once we get down here, we did the repairs. Now we got the net operating income. So we know how much we're bringing in in cash flow, how much our expenses are. Now we know what our net operating income. So we take the net operating income and we divide that by the purchase price here. And whenever we do that, that will give us the cap rate. So the cap rate says if I invest $100,000 into this house and I'm getting $10,000 a year off of it total, if I pay all my expenses, that means I'm getting 10% return on investment. Now with us, it doesn't end there. That's going to be on a different video, so you need to watch the video I do on throw off. But I want to cover this cap rate first, then we're going to cover cash on cash, then we will cover throw off numbers. So we're going to go now to just a, a deal on the board right here, and we'll talk about that. So I got an example up on our board right here. Can you get a good enough picture of that? Yeah. Zoom in on it. So we're gonna say that we go buy a house, and when we buy that house, that house is $100. I'm gonna stand up and up there. $100? So this house is gonna be $100,000 when we do the house. Now, we're gonna come in, I'm going to have 2% closing costs. Let's say the closing cost was 4%. Uh, the seller agrees to pay half of the closing costs up to 5% or something, whatever. So we, we down, we spend $2,000 on that. Then we look at the house and we need to do $48,000 worth of repairs. So I got to put a new roof on it. I'm going to replace the kitchen cabinets and I don't like the bathtub. So I'm going to pull that bathtub out and put a walk-in shower in it because I think that'll give me more rent and I want to get as much as I can out of it. So all of my repairs, whatever they are, runs me $48,000. Now my total investment in the whole entire deal is $150,000.
that is going to be my cost. Okay, I'm not going to use any of this right here. It's going to be the 150,000 will be my solid cost that we showed on that line. So now that house is going to yield me $1,500 a month in revenue. I probably need to change that because I can make that house now with um, 2023 prices would probably bring between 1,800 and 2,000 a month. But anyway, where that is is showing us $18,000 a year in income. So it's $1,500 a month, $18,000 a year. I'm taking all of my cost. I may break it down. The form that I showed you a second ago shows it broken down on monthly and yearly. I want it, my ultimate numbers are going to be on yearly numbers, not on my monthly, but I like to look at both columns personally. So then I'm going to include a vacancy factor. I did not go over that on that spreadsheet. Maybe it wasn't on there. Um, but I want to expect that that property is going to become vacant every so often. Now, most of my homes become vacant about every three years is my, is my average turnover through my portfolio. But I have some people that's been there for 15 years. I have some people that make it one year. I have some people six months into it, they get a transfer and have to move. We run into different stuff. So I do a, an 8% vacancy factor, which... I do it, that's a 7% on that number, I believe. That's a 7% vacancy factor, so I got that wrong. I do it, my vacancy factor, no, that's, I need to do, I need to verify that before we do it. You can block that out, right? Yeah. Sorry. I know we already run these numbers, so we take 18,000. That's 8%. Okay, so we do an 8% vacancy factor, which would be $1,440 every year that we're gonna take out. So we're figuring that once every 14 months, this house is gonna become vacant. So if it's vacant once every 14 months, then we got that money sitting in a checking account or a bank account somewhere else that is sitting there for whenever we got a month that we got to pay to rent, a month we got to pay, let's say we got a little extra in there and for painting and repairs and stuff to get the house ready to go, then we got a little bit of extra money in there that's going to cover that. Now you should be, if you rent a house for somebody, they stay there for two years, when you finish out, you may have to do a little touch up painting, but if you got to repaint your whole house after two years, then you may want to back charge that 10 a little bit of that money because that is excessive abuse to your home. You know, you can live in a home, I can live in a home for 10 years and never go repaint it. You move a tenant in a house sometimes, they're there for six weeks and you got to go repaint the whole house. That is, That should not be a burden on you. That should be a burden on them and that you push that cost back to the customer or the tenant. You don't absorb all of that. We can't absorb that with everybody. And as you get into managing properties, if you've never managed any, you're going to be sloppy in the beginning. You're going to you're going to rent to people you shouldn't rent to. You're going to deal with all this stuff. But if you have to pay for everything, it absorbs everything that you make. I had a trailer park that, man, it seemed like every time somebody moved out, I did a $4,000 repair. And that was what I was making all year long. So we had to make some corrections so that we did not get hit with that kind of money when somebody moves out. So protect your assets 100%. So we included the vacancy factor. And now with the vacancy factor, we're going to take that out of the rent. And that's going to give us a total revenue of $16,560 a year. So our total income coming in on that house, mailbox money, the money that comes into our mailbox or goes directly into our checking account, that's going to be sixteen five. dollars We're at a cost of $150,000. So now we need to go in and we need to say, okay, what expenses do I need to put against that $16,000? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a property management fee in there. That property management fee in there is going to be 10%. Again, we discussed that earlier. You may say, I don't need a property management fee because I'm going to manage it. Well, your time is not free. Your time should never be free. If you look at your time as being free, get out of the real estate business. Not, you, you cover every second of the time that you work. 